a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty thousand, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven, like the sound of rushing water or a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. They were singing what seemed to be a new hymn before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn this hymn except the 144,000 who had been ransomed from the earth. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been ransomed as the first fruits of the human race for God and the Lamb. On their lips, no deceit has been found. They are unblemished. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He, he whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spiritus Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Gloria ti, Domine. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. For those others have all made offerings from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has offered her whole livelihood. Verbum Domini. We welcome this morning Father Esteban Moyar from who's visiting from the Diocese of Savannah. In our gospel today, the Lord is watching the crowds coming in and putting their money, their offering into the temple treasury. 
And even though the poor widow's offering was a very small amount of money, the Lord says that she indeed gave more than all the rest because she gave everything she had, her whole livelihood. And why did she do that? She wanted to give everything to God because she had a great love for him. She had a deep sense of trust in his divine providence. And rather than the amount of what she gave, what impressed the Lord was the sacrificial nature of it, the love with which she offered that gift. This is what St. John Chrysostom pointed out. He said, the Lord does not look at the amount offered, but at the affection with which it is offered. Right? It's the love with which we give of ourselves to the Lord. And if one's heart is generous, and if it's open, then it's more capable of receiving the graces, the blessings that God wants to give us each and every day. On the other hand, if we cling to our possessions, our hearts are tight shut, they're less likely to be open to receive the graces God wants to give us. And if we empty ourselves of our attachment to things, to our possessions, we leave more room for God to work in our lives. And because the poor widow was detached from material possessions and wealth, it was easier for her to cling to God, to trust in him, to give her entire self to the Lord. And it's similar with us. The more we have, the more we are attached to our things, the more we tend to be filled with anxiety and concern over them. On the other hand, if we practice detachment and try to live simplicity of life, it's easier to be generous and to have a deeper trust in God's providence, his care for us. So this poor widow in the gospel is a good example of, to all of us of being generous and trusting in the Lord. And we can look at it particularly with regard to our spiritual lives and the effort of growing in holiness and our daily commitment to prayer. We will never regret being generous in our daily time spent with the Lord in prayer. And in light of this gospel, we can also renew our gift of self to the Lord according to our state in life, taking up St. Paul's words to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, our spiritual worship. And in all of this, very simply, our Lord's calling us to imitate himself, to love as he loved us. And he held, we know, he held nothing back of himself. He gave everything for us. He laid down his life for us, and he continues to be generous with us in giving us the greatest gift possible, himself and the Holy Eucharist. And we pray that our relationship with God may not be half-hearted, but rather that we may give ourselves completely and generously to him in everything that we do. We also ask for the grace to have a greater trust in him and to be fully confident that he is provident, and he will is powerful enough to give everything that we need, even in the most difficult situations that we face. As that woman, again, the poor widow, gave everything. When she had every reason to cling to what she had, she had that complete trust in him. And today we also celebrate the memorial, the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and this honors that day on which Our Lady was presented as a child in the temple to the Lord, to God. This is a very ancient feast in the Eastern Church where it's been observed and celebrated since the fourth century. And it was introduced in the Western Church in the 14th century. And it teaches us to give ourselves wholeheartedly to the Lord and to have a great love for the house of God as Our Lady did even from a young age. And today's memorial also, along with the feast of her nativity, which we celebrate on September 8th and the holy name of Mary on September 12th, these three feasts today and in those two, they correspond to three of the major feasts of our Lord, right? His birth at Christmas, the feast of his holy name, and in the feast of his presentation in the temple. And remember, especially today, the commitment Our Lady made to God in giving herself completely to him without reserve. And this particular memorial that we celebrate today, the, the presentation of Our Lady as a child in the temple, does not originate in the Gospels, but rather in ancient tradition. And we don't know much about Our Lady's life, her early life from Scripture, until the angel Gabriel appeared to her at the Annunciation. But we do know that she was full of grace, that she was conceived without original sin, and her childhood was unique compared to the rest of us because of that. Although in her humility, she may have appeared to others as just an ordinary Jewish girl. 
but she completely embraced God's will for her life, and she was united to the Holy Spirit from the first moment of her conception. And she would certainly be known, as we heard in our first reading today from Revelation, as one of those who followed the Lamb wherever he goes. Right? She followed her son all the way to the cross, to the end. And Our Lady was always docile to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. So we look to her example of being generous in response to God and his plan for our lives. And we trust ourselves to her intercession and ask her to present us to her son. And we also ask for the grace to seek with greater effort not to hold back anything in our lives from the Lord. And as we are and have been dedicated to God since the moment of our own baptism, when we were first brought to the temple, to the church, to be consecrated to God, 